Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. John, can you share, or you can get it started. Excellent. Oh, thanks very much, Lindsay. Thanks, everyone, for joining this webinar. Um, my name is uh, John Danushka, and I'll be going through the, uh, the cloud management portal for Microsoft Azure today. Um, first, we'll start off with some, uh, some housekeeping. We are recording the webinar, um, and we'll be mailing that to uh, all attendees following uh, the uh, the webinar. Um, Q&A, so you can ask questions during the webinar, like through the, the Skype conversation window, and I'll be happy to answer those questions um, in, the, in the chat box. So today's pre presenters, um, I'll be presenting. So my name is John Chanushka. I'm head of product man management for New Signature. My role is uh, to really uh, look after the, the development and product management of our cloud management portal. I've been at New Signature for two years, and this is when we started our, the development of the portal. Before that, I was uh, as a lead architect at one of the largest Canadian uh, banks uh, for about four years. And before that, I was an enterprise strategy consultant at Microsoft. So I have a lot of background in large enterprises, um, and specifically doing and looking at uh, public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud and really how enterprises can govern and manage uh, a, a cloud environment. And uh, today with me, I'll have uh, our, one of our solution architects, Ezekiel Klabia, and he'll be assisting by you know, asking questions throughout the presentation and then doing an overview uh, of New Signature. And I'll have Ezekiel introduce himself. John, real quick, can you please put the slides to full screen? Sure. So what I'll be doing is introing the, the Cloud Management Portal, and then I'll actually go and do a demo of the portal, um, go through all the key features and um, you know the things that resonate with a lot of the customers that I've been talking to. Um, and again, I've been doing this you know, for almost two years now, so I've got a good understanding of uh, what customers are looking for, the feature sets, and we've kind of geared the product towards that, so it should be definitely a good demo. And again, feel free to ask questions throughout the demo. And then we'll uh, review a new signature and uh, uh, overview with our company uh, to you at the end. So the portal overview. The, uh, the development effort for the portal um, started about, again, two years ago. And you know, at that time, there was a lot of customers of ours that were in Azure or thinking of going into Azure who were concerned about really understanding what they were doing in Azure. So for the what they're spending on Azure, what they're using, being able to understand trends and anomalies, really get a handle on their costs. Um, and it was diff very difficult for customers to do that from what Microsoft provided in the Enterprise Agreement portal um, that the, the customers had access to. So we saw uh, you know, an opportunity to develop this portal to really satisfy that need to really have a, a very simple, easy, any intuitive way of, of managing what they were doing, a couple of things were doing in Azure. Um, it didn't, doesn't have to be used by an IT specialist. Um, really anybody who needs to have a good understanding of their Azure usage, be able to see trends, can use our portal. And we want to make it also, you know, from a vision standpoint, to be that hub of the customer experience. And today, we're focusing on the, the whole governance of Azure for our customers through the portal. And we want to make this kind of the centerpiece of customers' interactions with new signature. So we have an, our professional services, our managed services business, and we want customers to go through this portal to, to access those particular services. John? We're having some issues yep. with customers being able to see your screen. Yep.
It appears can they see can. My screen now? At least someone can. One person can. Everyone else? You should I'm not be. seeing it either. No. And is not yet. Looks good. All good. Want me just to continue, Lindsay? Yes, please. Okay. So the key pain point for our customers was really this Azure cost management. Understanding you know, what you're using Azure for from a compute, storage, and networking perspective. Who is using what? And really have a, a really good grasp of that. Be confident. Of, that you have a, a good understanding of what you're doing in Azure. And that was kind of our focus for delivering this product. The portal really enables you to gain control over what you're doing in Azure and have confidence of moving into Azure and having greater use of Azure. So for this effective cost management, some of the, the, the core features of our product, we wanted to have, again, a very simple interface, very, very, very intuitive. You know, provide a nice dashboard, gives you a concise view of your enterprise agreement and of your usage. And be able to go in and monitor and be able to create reports, uh, create alerts, and to get, again, a really good understanding of, of your Azure usage and spend and not have any surprises be able to forecast, really to take a look at you know, your usage and spend and be able to see from a capacity point of view, budgetary point of view, again, that you have a good handle of what you're doing in Azure. You have the ability to do show back and charge back through the portal. Our portal gives the ability to really take the way you have your company set up and, and do that uh, effective charge back and, and show back and, and creating departments and projects and cost centers and allocating Azure resources into there and then doing uh, that uh, particular types of reporting against departments and projects and cost centers. So again, we wanted to be very flexible and granular enough for a lot of our customers. And of course, we want it to be self-service. Again, back to ease of use and having a very self-service type of platform and anybody can go into our portal and register and start using it immediately. Um, very easy to use, very intuitive, and this is really the design point uh, that we originally had and going forward. So we have you know, a, a detailed roadmap going forward. We ask our customers for you know, suggestions in terms of features and apply that to our roadmap. Um, so again, we're very flexible that way and really want to address our customers' requirements. Some are frequently asked questions. So cost. The, the use of the, the portal, the, uh, the licensing is free. Um, we made the conscious decision to keep it as fr from free from a licensing cost. And why is it free? Well, we want to introduce you know, the rest of New Signature to customers, what we do. And we have a large uh, company. We have over 300 professionals. We do professional services. We do managed services all of, with Microsoft technologies. So we want to expose customers to that. And we also ask customers to make us partner of record for what they do in Azure. Um, something that we ask, and again, it's not a requirement, but our, our licensing for sure is free. Support, we provide business hours support for the portal. No cost, we help assist you with the onboarding as required, setting up and configuring the portal to make optimum use of the portal. Um, we can even do one-on-one -on -one sessions with customers to really go into detailed scenarios and sessions and demos uh, with the key people in your organization. It's easy to set up and install. Um, very simple to, to set up the, the application, um, and I'll be stepping through that in the demo as well. We automate any updates. Um, we keep it very fresh. We fix bugs quickly and, and introduce new features on a regular basis. And of course, we make it secure. We are focused on the security and ensuring that, that you know, everything that uh, we access, that the customer's data is, is fully secure. 
And just a, a quick review of some of the customers using the portal. You know, we've been using, and we developed the portal two years ago. It first launched in March of, of 2015. And since then, we've got over 100 customers using the portal. Um, large customers, small, so it's a wide range of customers in, in North America um, and the rest of the world. A quick quote from one of our customers in the UK. And sorry, he, he basically says that um, you know, the, his use of the portal was really focused on managing his costs, being able to track costs properly, and he found our portal to be very accurate and reliable. Um, you know, we've worked with the DAC group, actually, really from the inception of the portal, and it introduced a, a couple of the features that they've asked for as well. And I'll go into the demo now. So a quick overview of, of what I'm going to be presenting and reviewing. We, we have two versions of our cloud management portal from Microsoft Azure. We have a, a SaaS version, so I'll, I'll be reviewing the SaaS version, as well as a version we introduced in Azure's marketplace, um, a VM implementation. Um, the, the reasons for the two, two versions, one, the SaaS version is a multi-tenant version. Multiple customers log on to the web interface and in, interact with the portal through that web interface. And there's a back-end database also in Azure. This is for multiple customers, and it's our multi-tenant implementation. The Azure Marketplace version is a single-tenant version. Um, customer sets up a VM. Our default VM size is a, is a D1. And it's all pre-configured with our application. Our web interface and our back-end database are all contained in that VM. And I'll be reviewing that as well. So let me flip to the demo. This is the, the, the main site for our SaaS version of the portal. So at portal.newsignature.com, um, it's a very simple process to register to the portal. There's a register now button, you know, customer clicks on it, and the next step is entering contact information. Um, first name, last name, email address, uh, the name of the company, um, a Microsoft account username. So this is what used to be called a live ID, so we required that for the first logon. Subsequent logons, we can use other types of authentication mechanisms, which I'll go into uh, during the demo. Uh, the type of uh, data source. So we enable going into the portal in demo mode as well. So Microsoft has a test uh, Azure enrollment set up. And we can leverage that. So customers who want to go and try the portal, kick the tires at the reporting and capabilities, but don't want to use their data, can use the use sample Azure data. Customer wants to even use their own data and, and enter the portal and start doing uh, reporting against their own data, um, simply click Use My Azure Data. This is where you need to enter a, an Azure API key. And this is the way we get, gain access to the, the spend and usage data um, within your Azure environment. That uh, API key comes from Microsoft's Enterprise Agreement Azure portal, which is at ea.azure.com in the under reports, download usage API access key. Um, it needs to be accessed by an enterprise administrator. So an enterprise administrator would have access to this API access key. And for this key, would give us access to usage and spend information for everything that you're doing within Azure for this enterprise agreement. So it's going to expand the key, copy it, and then paste it into our portal. Um, at the bottom, simply agree to the terms. Terms and conditions are, are fairly straightforward. Um, the privacy policy stipulates that we do not disclose any of your data to anybody. We will work with that data, work with you on, on what you're doing in Azure and, and assist you, but we're not disclosing that data to anybody. Once the registration is complete and, and you go through and sign on with that Microsoft account, I've done that already with mine, and I will log on and present that data. So the first logon, all your data will be downloaded. So this is from the inception of the enterprise agreement enrollment. 
So it typically takes about 10 minutes for the data to be fully populated for most enterprise agreements. Some of our larger customers, it, could, it takes about a half an hour, but again, on average, it's about 10 minutes. So once that download is completed, this initial dashboard view will show up. And this is just a view of your enterprise agreement. It shows this month's spend, last month's spend, a trend between the months, a quick graph of the last 30 days, and you can hover over each of the data points to see the, the actual daily value. The number of subscriptions in your enterprise agreement, number of virtual machines, the total number of Azure resources, all seen within this dashboard view. You'll see that um, there's a date for the most recent data poll. We pull data on a daily basis for all our customers to so try to keep this data fresh. The, the enterprise agreement uh, API that we leverage has some latency. So when we use the API, Microsoft does not provide real-time access to the usage and billing data. Typically, it's about a two-day delay. Uh, we've, some day, sometimes it's up to five days. Most often, it's, it's a, it's a two-day delay. And it shows when the API key expires. So the API key is, is, I want to reiterate this, that it's under your control. You can revoke the API key, which means that we do not have access to your data anymore. Um, if it expires, then you need to re-enter that key into our portal. But you have full control over that, that key and what we, what we can access. So John, quick question, Ezekiel here. I, I hope you can hear me now. I can hear you, Ezekiel. Yeah, excellent. So uh, a good question, I guess, would be how, how often does the key expire? Yeah, I, we just renewed it. So we renewed it um, about a couple weeks ago. So it's, okay. it's usually around five to six months in terms of the expiry. Okay, so customers always have control over that key and who can access right. the data. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, again, the customers have full control over the key. Um, keys and put it into our portal. We encrypt the key in our database. So the database is encrypted, and we in addition encrypt the key itself when we place it into the database. We ensure that you know no other customers have access to that key, and it's in a secure location. Even the administrators in our portal would not have access to it because they would have to decrypt that key. Okay, and in the case okay. of the marketplace VM the key stays within the VM itself, correct? Correct, yeah. So in our, our Azure Marketplace VM implementation, everything is self-contained in the VM. So the key, the data, is all contained in the VM. It does not go inside the VM. Excellent. So from the user interface, so the left-hand side would be the navigation through the portal. So the, the initial dashboard view, going into reports, other services that we have to offer, um, and settings within the portal. Start off and take a look at uh, some of the settings and take a look at the company settings. We have this initial starting point to give you a, a good view of what we're seeing. Yeah, we obtain all your enterprise agreement data. We see all the subscriptions, subscriptions that exist in, and you can see in this um, test Azure uh, Enterprise Agreement, all these subscriptions and accounts that we brought down. You can go into a specific subscription and the, click the gear button and see the details of that subscription. You see that this is an A1 VM, so you can see the, go back and see details of each of those subscriptions. At the bottom, is where you can create entities such as departments, projects, and cost centers. I've already created a couple called production and, de and development. Um, and as I mentioned in my introduction, this is a way of organizing the portal the way you have organized your company, the way that you could potentially do showback and do chargeback. If you've set up a department like production, so where you have Azure resources doing production workloads, VMs, databases, storage, Put, you can put that into uh, the production department. Um, similarly with development and test, if you need to understand those costs, really, uh, you know, what's the difference between production and development from my Azure usage? You can put those resources that are development oriented into this type of development department. If you've got a new project that is set up and it's using specific Azure resources, you can put that into a project. The project manager could then log on to the portal and really have a good understanding of the costs um, of that particular project of what they're doing in Azure. So again, it's a way of really organizing and slicing and dicing um, 
the, your usage of Azure. What I'll do is go into the production one and show you how I set, set up production. You can add, automatically add anything into a specific department or project. We have an, a way of automatically assigning resources. So if it's specifically, most customers would do this. They would select a specific subscription and then add that, and it automatically gets applied to that department. I've already added one subscription to this production department. Everything in that particular subscription is now contained in that production department. And any reporting you do will reflect those resources in that department. Additional subscriptions can be added. You can go down and select a specific Azure resource, select this particular VM, and add that to the department. We have the ability to take a look at and add, automatically add Azure resources by specific keywords. So if you have a naming convention that you're using for your Azure environment, you can use that and simply type that in into component and add that. It gets automatically apply, applied to resources for that department. Under users, you can add additional users into the portal. The first user that's added is what we call a EA owner. Now the EA owner has full control of everything in the portal, can do full administration, create additional user IDs. And we have a hierarchy of user types. We have the an EA owner can create additional EA owners, can create a company owner. Company owner, the key difference is that a company owner cannot create EA owners, has full rights to the portal. It's just a lower level than the EA owner. One of the most popular ones is an account admin. So a user that's created as an account admin, you can select specific Azure accounts that that particular user has access to and can only do reporting on those accounts and those subscriptions in those accounts. So it's a way of really targeting a user to only have access to a certain portion of your Azure Enterprise Agreement. So, so some of the, the key settings. Now under reports, um, we have the ability to do building reports, usage reports, an EA summary report. Um, and I will start off with the EA summary report because it gives you a good you know, initial feel of our capabilities from uh, what we're seeing through the API and you know, kind of the information that uh, you, can, you can glean from, from this data. So the, the enterprise agreement summary report shows your enterprise agreement from the time that particular Azure enrollment was started. It shows you the commitment balance. So the blue line is the balance of when it started, the size of, okay, my commitment to Microsoft is, is, is 50,000. So this is the left-hand legend and shows you when after usage the it drops down to zero additional Funds have been allocated into Azure, such as a renewal of the agreement. So this blue line shows that, that balance. You can see trends, so a lot of customers month to month, and as that balance goes down towards zero, you can really see when it's going to hit zero and project it all through this one chart. We show monthly usage in the chart. Any credits are in orange. The, the red is our, our Azure Marketplace charges. All this shows up in one chart. At the bottom, you'll see details of the last three months. So the balance um, and usage throughout that month, all within one chart. And this was, we created this report based on a couple customers wanting to see one view of their enterprise agreement, be able to see a chart that shows everything, including credits. Let's go to the uh, Azure billing section. So for our Azure billing report, filters can be applied to the report. So you can filter on a specific subscription. So you can select one subscription and create a report for that subscription. You can select a cost center, a department or a project that you've created and create a report specific for that department or a cost center or a project. And of course, the, the time period. We have some default time periods but you can set up a custom time period as well, whatever you're interested in a reporting period. If I don't select anything for any of the filters, then the generator report will show everything for that time period. So I'm gonna do a report for, for last month. Then 
this will show all the, the 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 billing for the month of May. So the first is a chart, so each day, and you can hover over the day to see the actual value. All the Azure accounts and subscriptions in your enterprise agreement in a stack bar chart, so you can quickly see which ones are the top consumers. All the Azure categories, such as compute hours, which uh, are used by virtual machines. So for, so for this one, compute hours are is the top category. A listing of all the virtual machines and which ones have been the most costly. And then a couple of pie charts, you know, one showing all the Azure services and which ones have been the, the top consumers. So virtual machines in this case to, has been the, the greatest slice of that pie. Azure regions, so your usage within all the Azure regions that Microsoft has through the, the world in this pie chart. And then at the bottom are the actual details of the, the billing for last month's so the total, and then a list of all the Azure accounts and the subscriptions and the cost for each. So John, a uh, uh, quick question. So this data is being accessed from the, from the local database, right? The SAS database, the SQL database. It's not making right. a query to SQL every time. Okay, so that's important to note because if I reclassify the, the data, then my reports are going to reflect the changes, correct? Right. So everything is, is contained within our database. Exactly. And you know, any changes that you've made um, will be reflected in that database. The, the, you know, the, the departments and pro, uh, projects and cost centers that you've set up are all contained in our database. Right? So that you know, they're reflective of what you've provisioned for, say, for a dep uh, department like production. I've included a subscription. Any changes to that subscription, such as adding a VM to that subscription, will automatically be reflected in that production department. Excellent. And uh, there is a, a question on the on the chat. So, in in, uh, in terms of exporting the data, so what are the capabilities? PDF, and then yes, and Excel. So at the top, yep. So when okay. you need to export the data, so we have a, a couple, actually three options right now. You can subscribe to the report. So subscribe to the report means that the report will be delivered to you in an email automatically. So if, for a, a monthly report, this report will be delivered to you. Um, at the beginning of the month for last month's uh, data. You can send the report automatically as a PDF by email. If you click this, it'll, send, it'll be sent automatically right away. Or you can just save it immediately to a PDF and view that PDF. We will also, in our roadmap, we have a, um, a plan to ex export data. So what for this month, of the entire month of May, all the billing data, be able to export that into a Excel spreadsheet. So a, a couple of our customers have asked for that particular functionality. So that's the, uh, the, the billing report. The, the usage report has a similar set of filters that can be applied. So you can select a specific subscription in your enterprise agreement, a department or project that you've set up. And the only the different key difference here with the usage report is the service that you're interested in. So in my case, I'll select virtual machines because that's a very popular service. Take a look at last month and the report for last month. So for usage and for virtual machines, the the the, um, the access on the left hand side is for hours. So it's hours of usage for virtual machines. You can hover over each of the specific days and see the actual hours of consumption. And then a pie chart of all the virtual machines, which ones are the, the top ones from a, a usage point of view. And the same data in a bar chart, so you can quickly see which ones are the, the top users uh, within your environment for that time period. And similarly to the, uh, the billing report, you can subscribe to it or save it to a PDF or send it by email immediately. Yeah, this, uh, I'm just reading a, a question in the chat window about setting up multiple reports to run. Yes, multiple reports can be run at the same time. You can have as you know a large number, as many as you want, reports that you subscribe to that are running that will auto-generate, that will be sent to you um, concurrently. Um, 
have different people get those particular types of reports, so we definitely do support that. So additional functionality. Alerting capabilities. So we also have the ability to alert on different thresholds, either for spend or usage. So for spending, I can alert on different entities within, um, within the portal. So I can look at the entire company and do a, th a threshold alert for spend on the entire company level. You can see I've done that on the bottom for the entire company. Or I can specify a specific account, a subscription, cost center, department, or project that I'm interested in. So if I target a department, say production, and I want to know, you know when billing goes above a certain threshold, so say it's $1,000 um, within a week, issue a warning 90% and add that particular alert. So this alert will be delivered to me as an email when that particular threshold is hit. So again, I can do this either from a spend perspective or a usage perspective uh, for my, uh, my entire enterprise agreement. Now, some additional functionality. So we recently introduced um, kind of a, a very, really new feature, one that I think will resonate with a lot of our customers. So today we use the Enterprise Agreement API uh, from Microsoft to bring down spending information and usage information. We're not really taking into account performance. So we saw a need from a lot of our customers to take a look at performance, and in particular of, of virtual machines, and take a look at that data, be able to analyze performance and make recommendations on the performance of virtual machines and optimize the performance with the size of that virtual machine. So we created a feature called, called right sizing. And right sizing you know, is meant to, to bring down all that performance information. So we ask, actually ask you for authorization to do that for each of your subscriptions. Once you authorize us for that, we bring down your performance metrics for those virtual machines analyze that and make recommendations on is it the right size, is it oversized, or is it undersized. And this feature was introduced about a month ago, and I'll quickly show that to you. So this is what it looks for what one of our test environments. We analyze the virtual machines, determine which ones are undersized, oversized, and right sized, and then make a recommendation. So let me quickly show you which ones we, we determine to be oversized and why. We support all types of virtual machines, so the original what Microsoft called Classic or V1 virtual machines, which we only were able to get CPU data, and the newer version 2 or ARM-based machines where we have a large number of metrics we can use, such as you know, in addition to CPU, memory, and disk I.O. So we're going to, be to collect all that data and make a recommendation. So in this case, for this virtual machine, it's a V1 virtual machine. We take a look at the CPU over this time period, bring down all this, these metrics, look at the average. The average value is very low. There's peaks happening throughout this time period, but really that average is, is really low. So based on that, we say that it should not be an A3, it should be an A2 VM, and make the recommendation to go to, to lower size. And this is the savings that you can achieve by doing that. We will present the, the overall savings in the dashboard view um, within, within your dashboard to show, OK, this is the savings once you use right sizing. Again, with right sizing, we're leveraging an API that only provides read access to performance data. We're not making any changes to your virtual machines. We're just analyzing that data and making recommendations on that data. And it's something also just from a roadmap perspective that we're going to be doing more and more of, um, doing the analysis, making recommendations uh, on, on what we're seeing in your environment um, so that you can have, again, better optimization of your entire Azure deployment. So this is a quick overview of our, our SaaS uh, portal. As I mentioned, we also have our Azure Marketplace version. Let me quickly go through that and how that is set up. So our Azure Marketplace version is set up through Microsoft's portal, so at portal.azure.com. 
And it's simply a matter of going into and doing a search. So I click on new and search on new signature. Yeah, John, there is a, a great question there in the chat about the right size, right size feature. Sure. So, what, yeah, what do you take a few minutes to explain what the, how that will look for the from the customer perspective in terms of cost savings and potential uh, adjustments of uh, actual consumption ba based on the right sizing? If I said a right size me now feature, if the customer wants to inline right size right directly from the management portal versus going, yeah. We're, we definitely got that request from a couple of customers of being able to act upon the recommendations. Obviously, you as the customer have to authorize us to do that, but we do, or do plan to include that in our roadmap of, you know, from the portal, being able to do that type of optimization directly. So back to the virtual machine. Setting up is just, I'm just setting up a, a virtual machine through the Azure Marketplace facility. So I've selected new signature, the Cloud Management Portal VM for Microsoft Azure, and this just steps me through creating a virtual machine. So the name of the virtual machine, um, what credentials I want from my the administrator to that virtual machine, which subscription to add it to the resource group and and the location. Once that is done, then all you need to do is RDP, so using the, the connectivity into that particular VM, using RDP, logging on to the VM. And once you log on to the VM, you'll be presented with the exact same type of registration screen that you see on the SaaS portal. The same process needs to be followed, contact information, company name, um, email address, uh, and password, and the type of data, if it's demo data, that you want to access or your actual data for your API key. We try to make the the feature set between the SaaS and the VM identical uh, in every respect, um, only some key differences between the two. And I'll go back to the SaaS one and explain some of those key differences. We offer a capability for a lot of enterprises to do single sign-on. So Customers that have Active Directory in their environment um, can do single sign-on to our portal using ADFS, so Active Directory Federation Services, and this would be configured under settings in general by putting in the metadata URL. We have help within the portal if there's any questions or issues doing the setup for a single sign-on. Um, you can contact us directly and we will definitely assist you. You can also do single sign-on using Azure AD as well for customers that are using Azure AD. Um, so we support that, and a lot of enterprise customers take advantage of that type of functionality, so users can use their own company credentials to get into our portal. So that's one key difference with the SaaS one and the virtual machine, where the virtual machine is self-contained. You need to remote into the virtual machine and access it locally, where the SaaS one also has facilities to do single sign-on. Other than that, you know, the functions and feature set are identical between the two, creating the same sets of reports, being able to subscribe to reports, create alerts, um, all through our, our cloud management portal. Again, we have two offerings, the, the SaaS one and the virtual machine. Any other questions, Ezekiel, that have come through? No, I guess, I guess what I... Maybe, maybe if we can elaborate a little bit on the on the future uh, features, right? Sure. Like the roadmap in terms of uh, management and how how customers are going to be uh, interacting with the portal in the future, right? Right. What the goal yeah, is? Right. right. The goal is you know, a couple. One is to enhance the portal. Like we're not stagnant in terms of the development effort for the portal. We have the development team is on site. We don't have any offshore resources for our developers. And we target functionality that we see that can augment what Microsoft provides. So Microsoft provides a lot of newer APIs. So we access the Enterprise Agreement API. We access for the right-sizing feature, the Insights API. So it's a very new 
a type of API, and we've gone through a lot of effort to do proper authentication and authorization using these APIs. Again, we're very cognizant of security, so we're going to do more and more of that with you know the newer APIs that Microsoft is providing and the new functionality. The last build conference that I uh, was at, you know, Microsoft announced that you know a better licensing arrangement for ISVs like ourselves for Power BI embedded. So we'll be starting to introduce Power BI embedded into the portal as well. So we're trying to use as much you know Microsoft technology where it makes sense in our portal. So use Power BI, use additional functionality you know within Azure um, just to enhance the portal um, to make it more scalable and resilient. Um, and we use today um, Azure SQL. We'll continue to use Azure SQL. We we'll investigate other types of of scalability options, such as augmenting that with Document DB. It's a NoSQL database, so it's under the covers. Things that enhance our portal um, overall, from both from a scalability, performance, and resiliency perspective. Um, we want to leverage the Microsoft's new API for for building and and uh, and usage. So. Microsoft today with their EA API only supports customers that have an enterprise agreement with Microsoft for Azure. The newer API supports other types of Azure offers such as MSDN, Pay-as-you-go, BizSpark. We will support that as well uh, in the next uh, um, month to two months. So we want to be able to have that, you know, again, comprehensive view. Some customers have an enterprise agreement, but they also have MSDN and have a separate agreement with MSDN. Then they can do that all through our portal as well. Um, we will provide additional uh, analytical capabilities. You know, today we have right sizing focused on looking at CPU, um, memory, disk I/O, those key metrics. You know, pr providing additional type of analysis for customers, really providing trending analysis so they they can get a better handle of that capacity planning with their environment. We want to do more and more analytics and provide that into our portal. And of course, you know, we have our other businesses as well, such as our managed services and our professional services. And we want to have additional capabilities and we kind of have a, a, a placeholder here for that for our monitoring or patching or remediation. So you, in your IaaS implementations within Azure, um, we can assist with, with do providing those type of services, be able to monitor those virtual machines, be able to patch those virtual machines. If you have key applications, be able to remediate and ensure that everything is healthy within Azure. So we have those services, and we'll have a, an enablement within our portal to automatically activate that and onboard very quickly. Uh, we want to assure that that you know that Azure is healthy for you, and you know, we ha we'll have a managed services that couples our our cloud management portal and the recommendations that we have, and we can assist with actually implementing those recommendations for you. A lot of customers don't have the time, the capability, the personnel to do that. We, all, we can offer that as kind of a one-stop service to do everything, analyze, keep it analyzed and on track on a regular basis, and ensure it's optimized based on recommendations that we're seeing in our portal. Excellent. John, there is a, there is a question on, in the chat. If, uh... What do you view as the key difference you've seen versus some of the other competitors, competing offers in the marketplace, such as Cloud Cruiser and Hanu Insights? Yeah, these are some of the competitors that we come across often. You know, a lot of our customers have been doing comparisons against them. You know, one, one of the key ones, obviously, is cost. So we do have that zero cost um, for our product. Other ones are functionality and features like, like right sizing, right? being able to do analysis and provide recommendations to really optimize and reduce your cost. Um, the other thing is to be able to create entities like projects and departments and cost centers and the way, set up the way your company is structured so you can report against that, be able to do showback, to be able to do chargeback. You know, a lot of larger organizations, and we've had a couple large organizations adopt our product, want to be able to do that, want to be able to really understand for particular areas that are leveraging Azure, okay, how much is one area using of Azure compared to another area? So we, we enable that, and that's a key differentiator. And you know, our, our scalability to our performance, you know, we take you know, a lot of focus on the performance of our product, you know, both the performance of the, the SaaS one as well as the Azure Marketplace one. We have two offerings, right? So customers who don't want a multi-tenant version, they want a single-tenant version, they don't want to have other customers logging on to the same web interface or using the same database. We offer that Azure Marketplace version as well, and we'll continue to have that. 
Well, thank you. Do you, do you want to now start to talk about a new signature? Sure. Yeah, I'll take a few minutes, and then I want uh, yes, I want to ensure we have enough time for Q and A after. So right. I'll just uh, yeah. Maybe Excellent. Go full screen. So yeah, so we are new signature. I don't think I had a chance to introduce myself because I was uh, my Microsoft wasn't working. So uh, my name is Ezekiel Calabe, and I'm a solutions architect with New Signature. Uh, essentially, working with John and uh, and the business development team to as in a pre sales capacity, uh, pretty much focused on Azure and all the cloud uh, cloud products uh, that Microsoft offers. So I'm excited to be here today. Uh, yeah, so new signature for those who don't know, uh, we are uh, we are 100% Microsoft focused uh, partner uh, located in in the United States, Canada, and the UK. So we have all offices in in the two continents, and then uh, so we we won uh, several awards. The latest two were uh, 2014 and 2015 uh, Partner of the Year in the US, which is, uh, was very very good for us. And uh, basically, what we do is uh, uh, we first we focus on delivering a, a great customer experience. So that's our number one priority. Everything we do, we, we focus on the customer. So we want to make every every interaction transparent and uh, and and great for our customers. And then we do well, how we do it. We plan, build, and operate. So we we make a commitment to to our customers to basically say that everything that we 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 design and build, we should be able to operate. So we we made a lot of investments into our managed services uh, practice, as John mentioned. So we we are very excited to to grow that capacity for our customers. And uh, also we on top of that, we we add a layer of uh, a strategic work for our customers because we realize that uh, the the journey to the cloud is not easy. So we we want to be there as trusted advisors and uh, help them through the journey. And as well as uh, providing learning and ad adoption services for our customers. Uh, so if you go to the next slide, uh, John. Yeah. Excellent. So the the main pillars of our offerings are uh, professional services. So essentially, that's a project-based work and uh, plat platform and productivity. And then we also do uh, custom design and development. So that's the, our typical offering for professional services for uh, consultants to go on site or, or work remote and basically act as the, as the technical advisors to, to your team to to complete the projects. And then we also have the managed services. So within managed services, we, we develop uh, several products. Uh, starting with the uh, new signature TNF, TMX, which is essentially technology management experience, and that that covers your uh, basically your 24/7 outsourced IT department. Basically, anything that happens within your IT department, we are there to help. And then the, then the following is the new signature IMX. So basically, that's infrastructure ma management, and with that, uh, we we do uh, patching, monitoring, and remediation of servers. So we have a 24/7 knock in in Canada, and then we basically monitor uh, critical systems for customers, and uh, and then we we provide pro provide reactive support for any critical uh, situations. And the new signature uh, CMX is basically uh, it's our cloud management offering. We we take care of everything related to your cloud services, which is uh, it could be Azure consumption or anything you have in Azure that you need to 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 make changes to, for example, VMs, networking, or uh, subscription management, user management, Office 365, and all the products within Office 365, such, such as Exchange Online, Skype for Business, SharePoint, we are there to, to help our customers. And uh, in terms of cloud applications, uh, obviously we have the cloud management portal, and then also we have very customized mobile applications, and then storytellers and board works for, uh, within, within SharePoint. And also, uh, we add a, a layer, obviously, for learning and adoption throughout any of, uh, of our offerings to, to be there and uh, provide learning to, and for your internal IT staff and as well as act as uh, trusted advisors to, to, to drive adoption within your organization. So if we go to the next slide, uh, John. Yeah, so how, how you, you can connect with us, basically you can, uh, you can uh, visit our website. We have uh, events going on 
every week pretty much so so make sure to visit that website to stay to stay in touch with us and to 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 learn what we do because we we our now one of our priorities is to to be leaders in the in the space right so we want to be there to to provide uh, learning opportunities for our customers and and, uh, and microsoft as well uh, so, so you can follow, you can check our website, you can follow us on Twitter at, uh, at New Signature, and also we have a page on LinkedIn. And I think that concludes the presentation. We have, we have a few minutes left for Q&A. So, John, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, so um, any questions now, um, I'm very open uh, to you know, further conversations on the cloud management portal if anybody wants to contact me directly as well. So uh, no problem there, but if anybody has specific questions right now, like we have a few minutes, we can cover off those. So thank you everyone for attending. We truly appreciate your participation. Please let us know if you have any questions or follow up and we will be sending out the presentation after this is all said and done. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone.